Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I am going to show you how to bind local and remote data to the React Regret component. I assume that you have watched my previous video on how to get started with a React Regret. If not, check the video attached to the above card or download it from the description below. Here I open the same application where all the necessary Regret modules are configured. Notice that the data source.js file has hierarchical local JSON data with task and subtask details and is bound to the data source property of Regret. And the subtask details configure to the parent records using child mapping property. Using the columns directive, I have mapped few columns from the data source to be displayed in the tree grid. Let me run this application now. See, the tree grid is rendered with a local hierarchical data. Now let's see how to bind self-referential data, that is, the flat data. The data source.js file contains a self-referential data, namely project data. In self-referential data, there are two mandatory fields, one to indicate a node and the other to indicate its parent node. Looking at this data, the task ID field holds a unique value which I'm gonna use to identify nodes and I use parent item field to map parent nodes. I navigate to app.tsx file and import that project data from the data source.js file and change the data source property value to load this flat data. Since I have changed the data source, I map the new fields in the columns directive and change its header name. I apply display format to the start date field. My next step is to remove the child mapping property as this is a self-referential data structure and map the task ID field to the ID mapping property and parent item field to the parent ID mapping property of the tree grid. This is how the tree grid ensures that the structure of the data is self-referential and establishes the parent-child relationship. I have already included the tree column index property with a value as 1 to show the expand and collapse option in the second column of the tree grid. As you can see, the tree grid is rendered with the self-referential data structure. Now you are wondering how to bind remote data to a tree grid. For this, I access the online data service with the help of the data manager. The data manager is a Syncfusion library that acts as a gateway and interacts with both local and remote data sources. I then import a data manager and web API adapter from the Syncfusion EJ2 data package. I create an object for the data manager and initialize it. To interact with a remote data source, provide the endpoint URL in the data manager with a valid service URL. This is the online service which I am going to use in my application and it has a larger records. By default, the tree grid loads all the root nodes on demand in scenarios like expanding parent nodes or navigating through different pages. Once the data is fetched from the remote server, data will be cached at client side to avoid retrieving data from the remote server repeatedly. As the tree grid loads the remote data level by level instead of old data at once, I need to identify whether the node is a parent or a child. Here you can see that this parent field has a boolean value which indicates whether it is a parent or a child node. This information helps the tree grid to identify parent nodes from the data source and then draw the expand and collapse button while loading them on demand. So now I map is parent column from the data source to the as child mapping property of the tree grid. I set the adapter with the web API adapter object as the service URL passed to the data manager is created based on the web API standards. Now I replace this local data object with the data manager instance. Look here, the tree grid is rendered with the remote data. Finally, I'll show you how to bind data to the tree grid component by sending an external AJAX request. First, I comment all the data manager related codes and import the AJAX module from the Syncfusion EJ2 base package. 
To fetch the remote data before the component is rendered, I import the use effect ook from the React package with an empty array as the second argument. Now I initiate the Ajax class with HTTP endpoint and call the send method. You will get the result through the onSuccess method in which you can bind data to the trigger using the React state. So import the useState hook from the React package and bind values to the triggered component inside the onSuccess method. Check now and you can see the trigger rendered with flat data through Ajax request. Now let me quickly recap what we have seen in this video. I showed you how to bind local and remote data to the React regrid and bind data through Ajax request. You can download a working example from the GitHub link in the description for this video below. You can also see if you are eligible for a community license which will get you a free license key to use your products. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.